What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So, I want to give you guys some updates on Vasil Lomachenko. There's a great article on LA Times by Lance Pugmire. Link in the description. Make sure you guys check that out. And it looks like he's going to return in November, November 12th or November 26th. This is good news to me because I think Vasil Lomachenko is a fighter who is starting to bud and really just come into his own as a pro. He tasted defeat early in that second fight in that fight with Orlando Salido. But right now, he's 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 clicking on all cylinders. And it's a guy that I've been following and watching for quite some time. And I really like Lomachenko's fight game. In fact, you could tell that, and I can't stereotype, but he doesn't fight like the region, like a lot of the people from the region he's from, like Ukraine, um, in terms of like the Eastern European style. Not necessarily Ukraine, because Ukraine has a lot of skillful boxers. But there's a lot of finesse to what he does a lot of rhythm and Vasil Lomachenko's on record saying his favorite fighter is Roy Jones Jr and I get that a lot because he's very athletic as well you know what I'm saying and a lot of times people are like they gravitate if you will to the style of the people that they idolize you know what I mean like just coming up in, in music like hip-hop I grew up on classic MF Dooms and Method Man and Nas and Pac, Biggie, you know what I mean, The Far Side, different stuff like that, Red Man, like classic. So naturally, being having those inspirations like LL Cool J's and you know what I mean, just overall good lyrical people, storytellers like Slick Rick, Snoop and, and coming up in that era of, of hip hop, DOC and stuff like that. And like l listening to that, my older brother and stuff, that's kind of my style is, is more like when I was doing music is more um, metaphorical wordplay. You know what I mean? Like M&Ms and, and stuff like that. I'm not like this. The bubble, the bush, got the dope in the bush. I'm coming to bubble the bush. I put the dope in the bush. Bitches are to the bush. Like, no, that's that's whack to me. So <laughs> I, I just got off on a little tangent about hip hop. But that's what reminds me of Lomachenko. I think you naturally if you idolize bruce lee or whatever you might take chapters out of his playbook and there's nothing wrong with that i think everybody who's great has studied someone great before them that's just kind of what i feel you know what i mean look at tupac he talks about um machiavelli machiavelli and like reading in the, the art of war sung su and all that so sun su so I think that's natural and you see it with Lomachenko because he's a he's a skillful guy the way he creates angles moves and then it's, you know I mean, it's his own flavor it's not I'm not saying he bit Roy Jones entirely but he has his own flavor mixed in with that what he does well with his natural attributes so bottom line he's must see TV so Bob Arum did the interview he says November 12th November 26th November 26th boxing is funny how it works Canelo was supposed to fight December 10th he got hurt in his last fight with Liam Smith that nobody wanted to see and now with that thumb injury he's sitting out the rest of the year so Golovkin and Jacobs might slide in Danny Jacobs and Gennady Golovkin might slide into that December 10th spot which leaves the November 26th date open that's where Gennady Golovkin was trying to fight because he thought Canelo was fighting December 10th so it's like musical chairs everybody's shifting over a little bit Canelo's out for the year Golovkin might slide into that December spot and now Lomachenko might slide into that old Golovkin spot so it's it's kind of cool um, Bob Arum says HBO is willing to pay the licensing fee, which was a problem in the past. I think it was Dante's Boxing Nation had an interview with Bob Arum or somebody. And Arum was complaining basically that HBO didn't have no type of budget to put on fights with Lomachenko. They didn't have no dates for him or something like that. So if they're willing to pay the licensing fee, it looks like that's all cleared up. And you know what I mean? Even though they didn't pick up the Pacquiao Vargas, that shows that Bob Arum's still willing to work with HBO. So. It, it's good. It's good because Lomachenko doesn't need to be on the shelf. He's too talented to be on the shelf. And you need to ride that wave. Not that Lomachenko is going anywhere or his skills are going to fade. And usually the guys that have the most longevity in the sport are the skillful guys. The guys with technique and just who can actually box instead of like one-dimensional sluggers and stuff like that. So that's not really a huge issue. But Lomachenko stayed in the amateur circuit for some time. And I think he's about 28, 29 maybe now. So... He's not getting any younger, you know what I mean? And that's why he, he's, him and Rigano are perhaps some of the greatest amateurs of all time. So, he needs to make noise as a pro, get, you know what I mean, get double digit wins or 
high double digits and stuff and just keep doing what he's doing ride the momentum of stepping up in weight class and knocking out rocky roman martinez in that fashion i mean he bullied him abused him that was like child abuse i was about to call Daifa. um so that's really what it is with vasil lomachenko oh yeah as far as opponents the people who are being rumored nicholas walters or possibly Jezreel Corrales. Now, I don't know much about Jezreel Corrales, but he's Panamanian. Panama has produced some pretty good fighters, great fighters even, like Roberto Duran, also Anselmo Moreno. So I have to look into him and, and research him. But he is a super featherweight champion, so that would be a unification. And we'll see. Again, I don't know much about Jezreel Corrales. Me personally, I think Top Rank will, will probably make the Jezreel Corrales fight because Nicholas Walters has been kind of on the shelf for a while they tried to make that fight and they couldn't come up produce enough money basically to make both parties comfortable and satisfied and i don't want to hear about side bets and you take 300 if you win because walter should have won versus jason sosa but now his record has a draw on it even though that wasn't a draw you know what i mean he clearly won that particular fight and that's just what it is so i i agree with nicholas walters and i always have agreed don't take the short money like up front like people always want you to take the short money oh danny garcia and broner they should just take the three to four million dollars even though this could be a 50 million dollar fight and then after they'll get bigger bigger deals and bigger no man you take you get the money up front like you always you ever watch like i love the crime drama genre like gangster flicks and shit like casino and goodfellas and stuff like that that's the bronx tale all that and you ever watch those movies when you're with the mob bosses and they're about to do this big deal, Blow or uh, Scarface or whatever, and they're about to do this big drug deal, and then they got the briefcase and they're like, show me the money. And then someone <laughs> and opens the briefcase and you get to look at the money before you get the drugs to them. You know what I'm saying? So I know that's a, a little bit different than boxing, but that's that's the, the cloth I'm cut from in my line of thinking. You show me the money first. Don't be... You can't be, oh yeah, if I beat you, and you know Lomachenko is an HBO darling, and they love him, and they they praise the hell out of him. I mean, rightfully so, he's a good fighter, but Nicholas Walters would not be the one, like, if they were both doing good work, I guarantee, I know how HBO does. They look at what they did with uh, Quadras, Quadras versus uh, Chocolatito. It was just super one-sided. Quatras was doing a lot of good work in there, and they were just really talking, oh, Chocolatito, it's offense, and then he switched to defense, and his face, he's 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 bruising a lot, but it's because he's he's such a good fighter, he's he's entertaining the fan. Like, no, he's bruising because he's getting hit. He's not staying out of the way of punches. He's getting too aggressive, you know what I'm saying? So, bottom line, HBO, their commentary has been biased in the past, so I don't blame Nicholas Walters for not take for taking the sh not taking the short money up front you know what i mean for a person who's favorite it's just like that's why fights like canelo versus amir khan i didn't even want to see that because i knew amir khan wouldn't knock out canelo i mean I, I just i could not see that happening i don't think amir khan has that type of power at 155 let alone 147 so that means you would have to outbox him uh canelo right and canelo has had some shaky judge decisions like 117 111 versus lada one of the judges said the mayweather fight was a draw you know what i mean austin trout open scoring was terrible and then they were basically saying trout was down by so much in a very competitive first half that he needed to knock out the win so i mean you don't want to you don't want to bet against the house like that so to wrap up the nicholas walter situation don't take the short money up front you know what i mean but if now maybe hbo has more of a budget and they can make the fight then great me personally, I think it'll be more or less the unknown commodity who's the champion, Jezreel Corrales, because that fight's probably all the way easier to make. You can just offer him whatever. You know what I mean? You see some of these fighters from like Argentina and they're not really getting nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Like Diego Corrales, or excuse me, Diego Chavez versus Tim Bradley got like 35,000. Alexander Brand from Colombia, he only got like. 35 50,000 versus Andre Ward so you might be able to play Jezreel Corrales but I don't think Nicholas Walters is gonna fall for it because he's beat guys he's beat Victor Chinny knocked him out with no hassle no you know what I mean no give just easy work he beat Jason Sosa even though they didn't give it to him he beat Nonito Donaire and was the only person to this day to have stopped 
We'll see if Magdaleno can do it. But right now, he's the only one that's ever stopped Donaire. You know what I mean? So those are the two opponents mentioned. The other person that fans are probably questioning why he's not fighting is a rematch with Orlando Salido. I think that's, once again, there's a money issue. Because Salido, you, you can't keep chumping these people. They're, they're acting like Lomachenko. He's a great fighter. But they're acting like he's just this massive A-side. Talent-wise, yeah, he is great. But he's not this huge draw. If you look at Nicholas Walter's numbers on HBO Boxing After Dark or World Championship Boxing versus Lomachenko's, they're very comparable. I even talked about that in another video. So Lomachenko, as great of a fighter is, he's not this huge A-side like Canelo or Triple G or Chocolatito even. You know what I mean? He's not just drawing all these crowds. You know what I'm saying? That Why they put him on the... They, in recent memory, he was on the Pacquiao undercard. So, you know what I mean? He's recently fighting on undercard. If you're a certifiable star, you outgrow undercards. When's the last time you've seen Triple G on the undercard? I'll wait. When's the last time you've seen Canelo on the undercard? I'll wait. Mayweather versus fucking who? Victor Ortiz or something? You know what I mean? So, he's not this huge A-side where you can just not give Walters a good amount of money and then they're going to just take it. Or Orlando Salido even. Salido is a Mexican warrior with the resume to prove it. He's been in there with Robert Guerrero, Juan Manuel Marquez. He's been in there with Gamboa. He stopped Juan Ma Lopez twice in Puerto Rico. He's been in there with Francisco Vargas now. He's been in there with that um, Coquit gym or, or whatever. He's taken these tough fights after tough fights. He also fought, he just fought too many people, you know what I mean? And a lot of those fights, like he beat Rocky Martinez before, I thought he beat him in the second fight, but he um, fought him before Vasil Lomachenko, you know what I mean? So that's one reason that the Salido rematch is harder to make. It's because he knows his worth, just like Nicholas Walters. And the money has been an issue in the past. And the other reason is, I think, Orlando Salido, behind the scenes, they're trying to make the fight with uh, Takashi, Takashi Miura, the guy that fought against Vargas, Francisco Vargas, on the Cotto Canelo undercard. And that was like a fight of the year war, the Japanese fighter, Miura. They're trying to make that particular fight behind the scenes. I don't know, probably in 2017. But those are the two reasons why it doesn't look like Lomachenko will fight Salido in November. So right now, the short list is including Nicholas Walters and this Jazriel Corrales. And I think it'll be Corrales before it's Walters. Unless they can come up with some money. But let me know what you guys think. I'm happy that Lomachenko is returning. We need some action for the fourth quarter in boxing. And he has a good style. He's the champion now after knocking out Rocky Martinez. We'll see what happens next. I'll keep you updated. Subscribe. Make sure you like the video as always. Hey, comment and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.